Hello everyone, I am here with Kara, owner of New Moon Goddess LLC. Um, so Kara, I'm really excited to have you here. Okay. We're at 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about yourself, like your background, um, kind of like the flow of up to today. Okay, so um, I, I'm from the Boston area and I um, I went to school for engineering um, in Boston, and then I did my master's in ocean engineering um, in Hawaii. And so um, while I was there, I kind of started getting into more of the, um, you know, empath crystals, like more like spiritual side of things because it's a very spiritual place, of course. Um, then I moved back from, from Hawaii to Boston and kind of brought that with me. And while I was in Boston, I got my first job in 3D printing, um, which led me to more 3D printing in New York. <laughs> and, um, and then also still developing those hobbies, which of course in New York, they're so available. Um, there's so many places uh, in the city to, to, I mean, to really do anything you're interested in. So that's kind of really drawn me here. Okay. Um, so right now, so you do a few things. Can you, can you tell us a little bit more about like what is it that you do in your day job? Like a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, my current day job is the director of operations for a 3D printing startup. Um, so basically um, my day to day is running the production center, like ma the manufacturing center for that company as well as um, you know, I'm responsible for all of our back-end systems and processes, uh, you know, just keeping everything organized, um, all of our daily operations in check, rolling out new processes, rolling out new products, um, our technology I'm responsible for, our customer service team I'm responsible for. I think the, the biggest thing that stands out to me is like the whole, you mentioned you did engineering and it's all that science and math and logic, so how like in your experience, how have you kind of navigated that? Because it, like, did you, like how does that relate in terms of, you know, left brain and right brain for you, like across what you've learned and in your position right now even? Um, so what I've learned about myself over time is I, I always felt that I was more left brain because I was so drawn to like calculus and physics and engineering and logic. And what I've actually discovered about myself which took a while because I, I put so much of my energy into school and to work um, that it, it took me a while to start developing hobbies and, and working on my creative side. And what I realized is actually that I'm a very creative person that is trained in, in, in I've trained myself in the skills that it takes to do engineering. Okay, so, that's uh, cool. Yeah. That's so a nice it, little. So it's kind of like more that and I'm, I'm encouraging my natural self more now as, as an adult than I was when I was younger. Um, and that's how I, I keep that up in my personal life. That's how I keep that balance, by doing creative things. And that's um, where like New Moon got is. Yeah, that's where New Moon is at Sam's Farm, yeah. But in, before New Moon, it was in the form of taking, you know, different classes or, or taking painting class or just doing anything to really you know, flourish my creative self and allow that, like, room, that outlet for it. Because I feel like even people who are not, um, even people who are not the creative by nature, it's so important to allow that. It, it's your fire. It's your, like, you know, it's your second chakra. Do you think you're not creative? Or, like, did you once think you weren't creative by nature? Yeah, I think I did. I used to think that. Yeah, I used to think, I think in college even, I didn't realize that. I think as a, when I was young, I think I really enjoyed it, but it was never, I never really like pursued it. And then in college, I thought, well, I'm not creative. I'm engineering. I'm calculus. I'm not creative. And then he would say Ooh, to many me, like, <laughs> I'm sure many people feel that way. Yeah. And, and people always, and I was like, People, we would discuss engineering. People, well, engineering is creative, and I'm, and I would be like, no, it's not. It's math. <laughs> you tell that to the calculus that I'm trying to figure out. Right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But no, but then you know, as you get older and you're in in the work field, you you find ways to actually balance. Like in in my current job, you know, I'm focused on systems and processes, and I'm also focused on the aesthetics of our new products. So 
even within that, you know, you find ways to find balance. I think it's much easier when you're not in school. Yeah, when you're, that's it, okay. So then, for example, now, how do you think your, your exposure or you accepting that part of you now is, has helped you in your leadership role, like as director of operations? Oh, okay. Um, in my leadership role, I mean, I think, number one, accepting, the more you get to know yourself and the more self-aware you are as, as a person and, and you give time to the things that, you know, really nourish you and give you energy, the, the better you can be in every aspect of your life. So naturally, I, by having these outlets in my personal life, by having New Moon Goddess, like, by having something that I'm passionate about makes me a better, better at my job because I'm more balanced, you know, it's just, and that's kind of what I was getting to before about I think everybody should nourish their creative side because it's even if you think you're not good or you can't make anything good, um, which I'm sure isn't true, but <laughs> I know a lot of people, that's a barrier for a lot of people. I still think it's really important because it, it, it's a way of grounding yourself. It's a way of balancing. It's a way of creating that fire energy within you and, and that allows you to be the best, the best version of yourself, to have that like balance between like the, you know, the emotional side and the logical side to, you know, deliver because, you know, in the workplace, it is very logical, but there's, you're also working with people and, and when you work with people, like, it is really important to be empathetic and to, and I think that is so important as part of being a good leader. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that helps naturally. So, for, how do you, are there people in your within your company that you feel are empaths or are highly sensitive people? Like you have like an inkling, okay. that you don't know. Yeah. And how do you work with them, or how do you work with the introvert, the type? Like even in engineering, I'm sure there are a lot of introverted people. Like yeah. how do you kind of bring them in and get their ideas and like to come up with something cool and new? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, my team is very is very small, so we naturally kind of have to be close. So eventually. Um, you know, and even if it, it wasn't it wasn't small, I try to like develop that idea of like a work environment where you know you should feel comfortable to say to speak your ideas and to to vocalize like what's important to you, what you want to learn, what you want, how you want to grow here. That's kind of how I try to introduce my employees that with one on ones and and trying to give them foster that. Yeah, that idea of like what is important for you to learn and develop uh, professionally and in your soft skills as well. Like, are you, you, do you struggle with your communication? Do you struggle with, you know, working in teams? How can I help you, you know, how can I help introduce that, those skills to you? And so that's something I'll do on a one-on-one -on -one basis so that they're comfortable. I think that's the, the best outlet for introverts as well, you know, naturally. Um, so that's something that I do. And then I think in, in terms of just like the team dynamics is like, I'm not, I, I don't really, I'm not really a competitive person or I don't really want to foster that in the workplace. I think, especially when you have a small team, it's so important that everyone feels like they can rely on each other, they can work together. There's a lot of like tag teaming. If you need help, you know, someone's going to help you kind of a situation. And I think naturally people start to come out of their shell. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I think like I experienced that when like you're working with um, types who are introverted or they're just quiet and you kind of do have to like, hey, like let's, we're, we're here, it's okay. It's kind of like okay to be yourself. And I think having that side that is highly sensitive, having that side that is empathic is like, I, I know that. Like I can help bring that out a little bit. But does that have its challenges? Of course, because so I'm a highly energized person, so, and I'm very animated. So when you're around somebody who's like, they're not showing you any emotion, um, you know, it's, and you're such an empathic person naturally yourself, it's hard not to take that on and think like, is this a reflection of me? Or like, am I, you know, making this person uncomfortable? Or, or are they just aggravated with me and that's why they're not showing them up? Like when you're empathic or when you're like, um, or may, maybe even a m bit more anxious, you notice people's emotions and you notice people's reactions to things immediately. And so when someone's not giving you any cues or they're not giving you any positive cues, you're naturally like, is it what's me? going on? <laughs> you're analyzing the situation. Yeah, totally. Is it me? Is it this? Are you unhappy? What, <laughs> what's going on? And they're like, I can't give you, I can't give that to you. We're not there. So you have to learn, you know, 
you have to give people yeah, their space. Yeah, you're all like, I'm open, you can talk to me. Yeah, you're like, like I don't know. Nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so I think what, what, what that comes back to is like, it's really learning to be like, especially at work, that like, you, you have to, you know, you have to have your bubble a little bit. You have to be able to say like, this is a safe space for people, and this is what makes me comfortable, but this might not make them comfortable. So like, I'm allowing them to unfold on their own time. I'm allowing them to, you know, take their time to, to become who they are. And, and you, you try to push a little bit as a leader, be like, as long as it's, you know, in, the, in their best interest. Um, or encourage them, I guess is a better word. That's true, because for example, like I think we try to help and we try to be like, no, I want you to be your best self and we can see them as their best self. Yeah. Like we can see like the best in each individual person, but it's up to them to kind of foster it. And I think it's in all relationships, not just even like leadership. Like if I have a friend, I'm like, you can, I know you can, like I know if you know you can do better and I know, you know the, the positive in you. But it's like, you can only lead a horse to water. Right. You know, like, and at that point, it's not our responsibility to take that in, to say it's us. Absolutely. So like, Absolutely. I think it's really hard to recognizing if when that's the case. Because I, I am extremely optimistic about people. And I think it's really important to stay that way. And sometimes, you know, sometimes that gets you. Because um, even though uh, it might not be their intention, it, it may not be that they're not... Um, it's not that they're not, you know, a, a good person or have good intentions, but it just might not be the right fit for them or it might not be the right outlet for them in their lives right now. And this is kind of like just the path that they're on. And you have to not internalize if, if that, if you're not able to help somebody grow, if, if it's not quite working in the, in the work dynamic, that it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a good leader or that what you're saying isn't sinking in. It just might, it might come through for them at their next job, you know, <laughs> like in the next step in their lives. And you have to be able to say like, you have to be able to see where where you can do better and where it's not for you to, to, to carry it. And um, I think if you're very empathetic, it's really hard to make that distinction and, and, it is. and not take it on and not take it home. And I think that's why it's so important to have like practice and ritual that you're separating your work from your personal and, and how you're, and, and how you do that and whether for you that's, you know, spiritual practice or whether that's a creative outlet. I think a creative outlet is a really great way to ground yourself and to separate, you know, and to, and to gain that balance. If kind of also like playing back into for individuals who are, who have also like a the majority of their lives, they have worked with sciences, data, numbers, um, who have been very left brain, like, what are, like, what advice would you give them um, in taking leadership, or like, even in academia, like, it's just a certain kind of person, right? And then they don't think, well, I'm not a creative, or like, I'm not, I just don't do these things. And then, you know, like, how would you, like, what advice would you give, like, those individuals to, like, foster that? I say, like, I, this, maybe this is simplistic, but I just think, like, it's, even if you, even if you don't feel comfortable, like take a class, like take some, do something where you're, do something where you have the ability to get that creative side on that is low pressure for you. Because obviously it's something that you feel a little like subconscious about or insecure about like stepping into because you're so comfortable in the other yeah. world. You're like, oh, I've never, I've never done this creative thing. Right, <laughs> I'm not, I, yeah, I always talk to people who are like, I oh, know I'm not creative. I can't, I can't do, I can't paint or I can't, do music or I can't do and I think that um, it's like do something so low pressure that like <laughs> it's a, I, I always had friends like I had when I had friends who were like more on the verge in their in their creative world they would always do those like paint nights I think the least low, the most like <laughs> low pressure environment you like could just like, like here, have some wine, paint some stuff. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, paint something. It's like almost like paint my number. Like do something where you get to look at colors and you get to like, you get to like. Do you want to paint a graph? Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Paint. Like is that gonna make you feel like yeah. a problem? Print out your lab report and just color it. In. No. <laughs> yeah, here's some color. Yeah, here's some color pencils. Like. But I mean, it's so silly, but I, I think just the act of doing it, even if you're not creating anything that you're like, I really want to hang this on my, well, it's just a way of activating that brain, that side of your brain, and I think that's so important. And I think as a left brain person, 
made if you look at it scientifically, it's something you can appreciate. Like even if you're not creating anything great, you're you're doing something good for you. Yeah, you're you're activating that side of yourself, and then eventually it'll flow from there. Yeah, I've had. I think I love. I like really like the idea of a painting class to get started as a way of getting started. I like that. Yeah. I, I mean, I had to go, and I'm, I, I mean, I, my background is in marketing, but it's kind of was the same thing for me. Like, I had to go through a discovery phase. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, because I, I was just like work and organization and structure, and then like go. But then at some point, I'm like, oh, like maybe I should draw. And I would think, oh, I'm bad. I'm terrible at drawing. Like, I'm really bad. And then something in my mind clicked where it was like, just try. <laughs> just like, what possibly could go wrong? And I remember, like, drew out this really cool thing that I was super proud of. I have a photo of it somewhere. But, like, that's how I started developing. Like, I, just, I went into, like, a discovery phase, I called it. Yes. Where I was just like, I'm just going to try things to try them. Yes. And then I just, like, dial everything else down. And I'm just going to, like, paint, plant, like, any of these, anything else that I've never done. That's so funny. That's exactly what I did. So I was in engineering school for, like, six and a half years. And so I didn't have a lot of time to foster the creative side. And then all of a sudden I had, you know, a little bit more availability and I was like, I'm trying, I'm taking some time and I'm just trying everything. I would, like, I would just, uh, I was unemployed for like maybe six months after I finished my master's and I would just like wake up in the morning, apply to jobs and then just sit and paint. And like, and then I would go to different classes and workshops and like I would, I would check out everything I could um, on that, in the creative, or spiritual realm and I think it, it, not everything's gonna be your fit or like or, or work for you but I think it's I mean it's just so fun and it, it's like really a process of discovering and it's just it's self-discovery like you're learning about yourself what do you like what don't you like and it's also a really good exercise in, in training your thoughts because all your insecurities come out when you're painting, you're like, especially if you don't value yourself or your creative side, all of your insecurities start to come out. And so it's like you, it's a little therapy. Yeah, it's a really important opportunity to learn, like, to be patient with yourself and to to be like loving towards yourself when you don't really wa want to do that. And um, uh, it's a challenge, but it's also like, oh, it's such a valuable lesson. You know, I think you're, you're going to be so much better for it. If you had any, like, three tips, okay. three tips to give, like, our community who they do work on, like, left brain field and they do do the STEM um, stuff and they work with data and all that stuff, like, what advice can you give them about, like, fostering leadership with them and kind of being able to work with both sides of themselves? Yeah. Like, like in the top three. In the workplace or just generally as a person, you know? I think... I mean, there's, I would say more, like, in leadership roles. Okay. Either in, as a business owner, like, yeah. what you've learned, or, like, any of those from, like, your experience. Okay. I would say, like, especially in the workplace with leadership, I think, you know, valuing the creative in yourself is, is important because I think it helps you better relate to other people. So especially if you're really focused on numbers and, and logic at, at work, I think, um, you know, that is one type of leadership is using mm -hmm. metrics and using data to... Right, and just like speaking numbers to someone. Right, yeah, and it's a way to, to move a company forward for sure, and, and it's, it's really important for a lot of aspects to be successful. Um, but as, as a manager of people, um, I think a lot helping, you know, once you can, once you learn how to like engage with that in yourself, you can help your employees engage with that too. And, and all of a sudden you can create a more well-balanced community that you work with. So I think that's number one is like, um, you know, it, it is doing something in your own time to help you you know, balance that side of yourself. And then maybe finding, once you, you know, go through your discovery period, find out like what it, what you can bring to the workplace that from that world without, you know, going too off the rails if it's not the right environment for it. But like, I think that is, it's really nice. Yeah, right, can you imagine like walking in to like a, a finance meeting and just being yeah. like, hey guys, the moon, like today, we're just not gonna have this. Yeah. Technology's not working, Mercury's in retrograde. Yeah, like we're just <laughs> yeah okay. It's just not, that's so funny. You know what, it, we talk about it at my job though sometimes, it depends on the people, right? Like, but yeah, no, it's not, not for every environment, um, for sure. Um, I think that, yeah, I think you have to find the balance, but it is something that 
I, like especially in the startup community, sometimes there's these opportunities to connect with people. I think like if you start to learn something, sometimes they'll let you like teach a class at lunch or something, or like do. And I think that's a really interesting dynamic at work and really cool when companies that do that. That is really cool. Yeah, I worked at a company that uh, that was like they, they were starting a program like that where basically um, if you had a special skill or something, you could you, they would let you like host a class and they they would help bring like whatever you needed to do that and it could be like anything, you know. Wow. And so, um, so like even if it was like engineering, like you yeah. could bring in. Yeah, if it was engineering, you could bring in like. What I class did you teach? I didn't end up teaching. It was it was something that was being introduced when I was leaving, and I didn't. But I had a lot of ideas. I thought, <laughs> you know, would be interesting. Um, and I think that you know something we were talking about earlier is like how how you in, how you find out if people are more creative like you as well. Like that would be an interesting way, <laughs> just being like, hey, I'm gonna teach wire wrapping crystals. <laughs> Do you want to join me at lunch? You know, that's, that's fine. That is really cool. <laughs> that's a very, very good idea. Yeah, I think like, so I, I mean, I think that, you know, people, there's opportunities to do it where, you know, I think if you're, if you're a leader, there's, I think a lot of companies have like team bonding experiences or team events or whatever. You know, you could take everyone to a paint night or you could take everybody to, you know, you could do something where you get people into that mindset naturally as, as a fun thing or as an extra work activity and I think that that allows you all to connect more and to get a deeper understanding of who you work with and like how, how they work and, and how they open up and that makes you a better leader for sure. But yeah and definitely like I think that's especially where like empaths and how you sense that people can shine. Yeah. Being like let's get everyone together. <laughs> yeah. Let's try that. Yeah absolutely and that you know, and even if it is working with the sciences and you know it's like well let's at the end of the day, we're people. Right, right, exactly. And everybody has that side of themselves somewhere, even if it's deep down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, and I think that's a good point to make. Like, it doesn't matter if you're in the sciences, if you're in STEM or anything like that. Like, there's always that part of you, that childlike wonder, exactly. to like tap into, and yeah. just like, don't forget it. Like, try it, paint and all that stuff. Like, Absolutely, what, and I think that's like, it's a very like, uh, I think people sometimes separate like intuitive and emotional from logic and I but I believe that when you're tapping into that side of your brain you're just more receptive to like to your intuition which is where like all your good ideas come from and like business doesn't have to be separate from like yes you can drive you can drive a lot of information from math but it's not always a perfect predictability of like what what we can do and what we can create and I think that being able to tap into that intuitive side and being able to tap into that like that place wi within you you might find that all of a sudden people who are focused on data like have great ideas that can further the business as well you know it doesn't have to be just purely like oh this is fun and this is just creative and this is like work you know brilliant yeah, yeah that would be like the I was thinking I was like that would be the wrap-up it's true it, it, 100% it's like it's not black and white right like we're not it's not like oh you're create here's a creative side and here's like a logical side like there's a way to fuse them absolutely and you just add on by by like fostering that that part of you more and more yeah so well thank you for joining us it's been an absolute pleasure yeah hope you guys enjoyed we will see you next time <laughs>